What's up guys? Okay, so um, first off, before any of you guys click away, uh, this is going to be a uh, review up to episode 52 of Hunter x Hunter. And before you leave, um, even if you don't read Hunter x Hunter, I really guarantee you, or if you've already read up until the latest one, uh, let me just explain myself. This is in fact a uh, sort of uh, come join me sort of journey. And I've mentioned this before in my other Hunter x Hunter videos, but basically, if you haven't been watching or reading Hunter x Hunter, I suggest you start and you can very easily catch up to me and watch the videos I make as we both um, engulf the, man the manga slash anime. And so right now I have just finished episode 52 a couple seconds ago and yeah, you guys can continue with me along this journey and I will be periodically releasing um, reviews from episode one until the current episode and they will be very sporadic so maybe every 10 or 20 episodes i'll do a review on everything up until that point in just one big video and i think this is a good way because right now the episode has gone up to 110 and so we can together if you haven't read or watched the series yet we can together sort of uh, watch this and then discuss and uh just think about uh, what's happened so far and really take in a very good uh, manga series and so for those of you who have watched it I think it'd also be pretty cool for you guys to look at the journey and see you know what my interpretation of it as a new uh, person for the first time experiencing it and I really think that this is a really good type of journey to have because uh, I know because from someone who's read Naruto and Bleach and Toriko up until the latest episode uh, it'd be really cool to see someone brand new experience this this amazing sort of storyline and universe for the first time and that is why I've kind of tried and passed it along to my siblings although they don't really really respect or really want to get into it so it's hard but um, yeah uh, if you guys have any tips or advice to get my siblings into it, leave a comment below. Uh, my um, Some of my siblings just don't want to. Like, they, they're into the whole live action kind of thing, like Friends, Lost, those kind of TV series. And so uh, that's, that's, there's really no getting through to them. But yeah, um, this is my regular hairstyle when I get out of bed. It's always very crazy and um, yeah so for those of you wondering about my video camera uh, basically this is probably going to be the standard one um, this is as good quality as it's going to get the others were in fact more so, sort of rentals and so I'm sorry uh, maybe if I if I really truly want to I'll get one for my birthday my mom wants to get me one but I, I'm having second thoughts I mean I don't know yet. Anyhow, um, to the review. This is up until episode 52, and I just finished it, and it will be a review from episode 1 to 52, uh, a generalized discussion on everything up until this point. And so, so I very, very much liked the return of Leorio. Uh, I think that's his name, Leorio. Um, but he's a very good character. I really like the sort of the gag personality he has. And that's one of the things I really enjoy about Hunter x Hunter. The personalities are very unique. I mean, look at Hisoka. He's a very dark, mysterious, evil creature. But because of his mystery, you, you don't know if he's actually good or bad. Because there are a lot of encounters where he, he does end up helping the good guys in the series. But at the same time, it's, it's, it's more like he's fickle. He... He doesn't have a moral compass or a right or wrong. He just does what he pleases, and you don't get those sort of characters in like manga, like fairy tale, where most characters are very one-sided and simple, and the plot is very simple and not so great. It's it, you won't walk out of fairy tale chapter thinking that was the greatest thing ever. Uh, that was the most unique plot twist. That was the most unique surprising ending the power levels on these people are ridiculous you're not going to get that from fairy tale it's very simple one-sided more geared toward a younger audience and that is why a lot of 
manga reviewers on YouTube have dropped Fairy Tail as a series. And partially why I've picked it up because there's still an audience for it. But I'm not going to lie to you and say Fairy Tail is a, uh, just as great a manga. But um, back to Hunter x Hunter, I really think the character progression is great. Um, I really think, yes, the, the fight arena, the Coliseum thing, uh, it was a splendid move to just end it there because, I, I mean, there was this whole potential for the story to go in a way where Gon and Kilu Kilua stayed in the Coliseum and did what combatants in it want to do. Fight till the top, beat the floor master, and then win the Coliseum thing to become the, like, the, the title of the king of the Coliseum and win that whole tournament thing. That would have been the expected progression. But because of the character development and their personalities, they didn't want that. And I really liked that. And it was just like very good because the plot was getting stale. It was getting boring. And I really liked this whole twist of them progressing to the next big arc where the Phantom Troop is involved. And I really thought this, this was better because it was getting stale. And the whole battle thing, it, it, it just seemed like uh, Gong was either beating them with one push or, or two, uh, Gong lost and it was only because uh, he needed experience and he needed training to figure out how to beat them. And, or three, he has gotten the training and experience and he has beaten them. Or four, he's fighting his over and he loses badly because of the huge power gap. And so there wasn't really that much dynamic. It wasn't like a lot of the combatants uh, really challenged Gon or Kilua that much. And sure, we never saw any of the floor masters, but unless, I mean, it was just getting stale because as far as the author of the series chose to do, he never really presented uh, characters that were strong enough that were formidable enough to face Kilua or Gon, at least in that arc. Uh, none of the floor masters were presented or anything. And I mean, Hisoka himself, he never lost a fight in that Coliseum. So it seemed like effortless. Like, so it, it wasn't, there wasn't challenge. Therefore the plot was very stale and flat. And so I really liked um, the whole switch up to the, uh, them leaving the area. I mean, Hisoka said, He's not going to fight Gone again in that arena. So it was a very good switch. And then I really liked the whole thing with the the, uh, the troop, the phantom troop, because finally we see Kurapika in action again. Kurapika? Kurapika? Kurapika. And uh, we see that sh he's not weak, or is it he or she? But uh, she it looks like a she. Uh, but I personally thought she was weak. I mean, Leorio... He's got that gag sort of thing, like, we know he's kind of weak because, I mean, Gon pretty much carried him throughout the Hunter exam, and he really didn't do much, and he's kind of got that weak thing, but he makes up for it in the same way that uh, Usopp in Luffy makes up for it, with just his, his, his personality, and the difference between him and Usopp, or Hercule in Dragon Ball Z, is that he he doesn't truly believe he's weak on the inside and he's not trying to cover it uh he he's constantly trying to help gone in every way he can and he's very uh he, he wears his heart on his sleeve and he he will fight or or try his best to beat a foe when he can when he can and he won't like do like some sort of fakery like hercule and dragon ball z if he feels like he's going to lose he's going to very obviously retreat and stuff as we saw when they were trying to uh, stalk those two phantom troop members and i really like the phantom troop in the fact that they were they're very very strong and we again see villains in the series that they will have a hard time beating and it seems like once again there's such a huge power gap between them that there is motivation again for them to grow stronger as main characters in the series. And that is why I really liked how uh, they left the battle arena and started this new thing. And so I really liked th this whole universe because you see a whole bunch of 
different power levels which you don't always see in other manga and the latest episode was uh, Killua's dad and grandpa fighting the boss of the Phantom Troop I thought it was the best battle yet and we see this huge power difference between him and Killua and I'm very confused about this because Killua is apparently the most gifted or talented person ever in the history of their family and yet they still have such a huge power difference I mean Killua knows he cannot even with Gon's help be a single member of the Phantom Troop and yet his dad and grandfather are fighting with the boss but then it kind of makes sense because their boss kind of it, it was implied that he beat his dad and then it is a 2v1 and it's it's very interesting and I do kind of know what happens because occasionally I get curious and the wikia for Hunter x Hunter spoils things so I know that um, it ends with a cliffhanger and it seems like the grandpa's going to die but also the boss is going to die as well uh, but wikia spoiled it and it says that uh, there's quotations around death so I knew um, there's like a paragraph that said that depicted a picture of him dying and it was exactly this scene but we know he's not going to die because there's quotations around death so he's most likely going to return and yeah I'm just very curious I'm guessing it's because Killua is still very very young Comp uh, same with Gon and that is why despite them being such prodigies they're still very um, despite all their training too they're, st they're still so very low in power level compared to all these people and I'm really curious to see how they go because Gon and Killua both seem to have this, the in equal level of uh, prodigious talent and they seem to be like uh, I think it was quoted one in 10 million to have that sort of talent and so I'm really curious to see how the power level progresses um, we've been on this sort of phantom troop arc for quite a while so far at least for me it's been like so many episodes and I have been reading a lot of the manga to go along with the episodes not as much but um, a good deal too and it's just been it's been going on forever um, I believe it's it's been around like 50 chapters since they first arrived in uh, new uh, York new city and I just and I realized like uh, 15 episodes ago that York New was a play on New York City uh, which was pretty cool and it's very interesting to note that a lot of the terms used despite um, originally being in Japanese uh, they have a lot they, they, they reference they speak them in English and it's almost like the the author originally chose to make some of these terms in English it's, it's very obvious York New City being one of them and so I'm very curious to see how it goes and it's sort of, sort of getting stale again because we do not we haven't seen Killua or Gon really progress in power level or really train or increase in power level for quite a while. And Leorio, I mean, we I do like him as a character, but I really want him to be a lot stronger. But it seems like I mean he was he's pretty much carried through Hunter the Hunter exam by Gon and he, he does seem to have a lot of strength and potential and he's a good friend but um, I want to see more growth uh, Karapika again I've seen the most growth from him and I'm very surprised and I really like that uh, he is definitely the strongest all of a sudden and I mean up until that moment when he killed a Phantom Troop member with his ridiculous overpowered abilities um, I thought he was a very weak supporting character and I'm, I'm very glad to say that's changed I mean it's very clear from a very early on standpoint that the four big char main characters were Killua, Gon, Leorio, and Karapika and I'm pleased to see that it's not just Gon and Killua who have that amount of strength in fact I, I had the same sort of feeling with Gon earlier even though he was the main character because all he, all he was doing was swinging around the stupid fishing net as his ability and I'm so glad that they've dropped that item as his like big thing but maybe he hasn't maybe it will return in the future and the other thing was like he never seemed that strong uh, in comparison to Killua but um, I'm pleased to see that he has progressed and it seems like they are equals so that is that is it for my discussion from episode 1 until episode 52 uh, which I just watched and I will be watching a lot more I believe I watched like 
20 episodes in the last two days, 20 to 30. And so it's one, it, probably not like 15, like episodes take a while. But yeah, it's been, it's, it's been quite a series and stay tuned for more of this sort of um, general discussion slash review from whatever chap chapter I stopped on to the latest chapter and I, I will be skipping around so expect the next one around maybe episode 70 or something like that until I get to the latest episode which I believe is like 110 and it'll be sad again it was sad when I hit the end of Toriko but again what happens is I just swap over to the manga and then I'll just keep reading the manga from there and so uh, leave your request if you want a particular episode reviewed I don't know if I can fulfill it but I'll, I'll take it into account and I do read and respond to most of the comments as long as they are nice. All of them if they are nice. And I will see you guys later. Don't forget to like, rate, comment, and as always subscribe is completely free. Just hit the button below and I'll see you guys later. Thank you for watching this whole general review from episode 1, 252 of Hunter x Hunter. See you guys later.